we're now going to uh, look at the speech by the former president, John Dramani Mahama Kempiski, where he talks about the fact that Ghana needs a new leadership response to the crisis that Ghana is facing. Now, George Oparado uh, was at that event, and so would um, ask him to briefly walk us through what, he, what the former president and the NDC as a whole wants us to take away from that event, and then the rest will also uh, tell us what they think about what the former president said. So, George, um, first of all, why did the former president find it necessary to, do, uh, to give that speech at Kempinski? As a statesman, and also as a former president of the Republic, right. issues that concerns this country concerns him. He has every right to make inputs, and he believed that it was the best time for him to speak. It was just after May Day. And he also felt that it was time he made some suggestions known to this administration. But moreover, the question we should ask is, do we admit we are at the crossroads? Right. Are we happy with how this country is being governed? Are we happy with our, with our outlook as a country? Mm -hmm. Because almost every international agency have one way or the other downgraded Ghana. So the Ghanaian brand itself, are we excited about it? About a month ago, I was with a group of young Ghanaian investors in Washington. And these are people who are into hedge funds and then raise funding to support businesses across the world. But they still carry Ghanaian passports. And the sad aspect is that these young men, because they carry Ghanaian passports, are now suffering on the international market when they go and raise those funds. Simply because around the world, Ghana has been downgraded. And it leaves much to be desired. So if the former president decides to speak and then make proposals, I believe this government should listen and listen well. Moral, if you are a host of a program, let's say Inside Pages, for five years, and at the time you were taking over, you had about 100,000 people tuning in every morning. And after five years, people who tune in any time you host the show have dropped from 100,000 to about 50,000. Clearly, your managers should be worried. They should start asking questions, why have there been this drop? And then the necessary reshuffles will have to be made. Around the world, businesses, sometimes just a name, being appointed onto a board or into a managerial position changes the dynamics of the company. Those of us who deal with stocks, a name, a major name, or even the death or a resignation or a person going on retirement can affect stock levels. That is what Ghana is suffering from. I have set time without number that the biggest problem that confronts our financial industry is Ken Oferiata's finance minister. He's been there for five years, six years now. The question we should ask ourselves is, has he performed creditably? If you look at the amount of resources that have been made available to this government in the last six years, three are your wells. No government has been better resourced like this government. At the time they took over in 2016, we were paying 10 billion in debt servicing. Today we are paying 50 billion in debt servicing. There is no physical space for anything. In the last two attempts that we have gone onto the international market to borrow, we failed woefully. That is how come they had to resort to e-levy. So we have challenges. You've been in government for six years. You've never reshuffled your government. Even morale in some of these ministries are the lowest level. Because if I am working for you and I am not getting the needed support and drive, when I wake up in the morning and I choose to come to work, there is no morale. It is the people, it is people who make the difference. So if somebody has been at the ministry for six years and almost every sector under him have seen a decline, in the last two, three years, state-owned agencies that were making profits are all losing money, and the same people are still there, then clearly we are lost and we have a problem. The third aspect of all the challenges that confront us is that the president has never accepted responsibility for anything. And any time there is a problem, he's quick to blame his predecessor. On many occasions, the blame has been President Mahama. A government that after six years still blames his predecessor is a government that is bankrupt of ideas. And that is where we find ourselves. So President Mahama speaking about Ghana at a crossroads, he raised very important points. Let's take basic education, for instance. 
curriculum at a basic level have been changed. And you see, we can choose to play politics and do our everyday politics. And we can also face reality. What is the state of Ghana's education under President Kufadu today? Basic education, three years of changing, after changing curriculums at that level, no single textbook has been supplied. How are the teachers supposed to teach? If you want to destroy any nation, destroy their education system. So education is suffering. Capitation that goes to basic schools are in arrears over a year. Secondary education, if not for the way they have treated headmasters and the way they have, when Napo was at the ministry and some of the trends that were made, the headmasters, my own school at this other college, the headmaster was removed because of certain decisions on free SHS. And a lot of other headmasters have suffered same. Okay. But we all admit that secondary <laughs> education has serious challenges. Right. That Charles has come out several times to tell us that if food supplies don't even come in at a certain time, they'll be compelled to close. Go around and look at the food that is being given to secondary schools. And many other issues. In terms of health, health insurance is in arrears over a year. Local governance. Today, as we speak, Closag is on strike. So every facet of our daily economy is challenged. And that is why he believes we are at a crossroads. And he gave prudent suggestions. Basic, not, not rocket science. Things that he believes that as a manager of any economy, you must do. A few changes here, tweaking a few things here and there to restore confidence. People work for you. And so whether we want to do the normal politics we do every day or we'll look at the issues and deal okay. with it and take some words out of it. But I will conclude on E-Levy. Right. The NDC is not against taxation. But the NDC will cancel E-Levy because E-Levy is a bad tax. Moreover, when you have 50,000 cities as your capital and you choose to send it round for business you, through electronic transfers, immediately you send the 50,000 as your capital to your supplier, you will lose a certain percentage of it, 1.5% of it. Anytime you do that transfer, your capital will be chipping away. You can tax electronic transactions that are done to make profits, mm. but you don't tax capital. And that one, we as a political party have been opposed to it right. and will continue to oppose it. Okay, so Paragraph Bar 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 sends me a message in response to what you said. It says, on E-Levy, um, I don't know how such a progressive tax such as E-Levy, which by 2024 would have raked in about 10 billion cities, would be removed. It beats my mind to think that when homegrown solutions are applied to the future of Ghana, JDM would propose such measures. It appears that JDM, since he was absent in Ghana and in Harvard for the lecture, missed a lot of great things that President Ekufado is doing in relieving the Ghanaian people. I believe his office has, had, has an update for him. <laughs> in conclusion, this lecture of Ghana at Crossroads is a by data of flag bearer JDM and NDC manifesto who they are, of who they are and descriptive of their ethos. Regards, Pablo Bache Dankwa, a government spokesperson, governance and security. He sends us that message. Um, Big Charles, okay. if you can do that, make it as brief as so that um, okay. we can, right, cool. th the rest can also have a bite. No, but we're going to get it called a uh, timeshare. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was watching. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. I was watching, I know, to, I know. The two of us. I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I speak, uh, yes. so you know PASCO? PASCO, yes, that's in past uh, questions. Past exam questions. Yes. Uh -huh. You know they're never difficult. Right. So when you're in an examination condition, it is different from actually coming out of the examination hall. Right. And that's what President Muhammad is doing. I see. You understand? Because um, it's like going into a June exam, which you fail, mm. which was the first term. Right. And now he's going in for the North Deck. He's using the same materials that he filled the June exams with. Right. And um, for Ghana, it's not a country that we can actually play such games with. Okay. And that, um, that I forgot to do something and that I have to come back and do it. If you're coming back, then we must be serious. Right. You know, and there's one thing called goodwill. Right. Out of consistency, then goodwill comes in. Right. Okay. Right. So if you look at the history of the NDC. Right. Um, especially under President Mahama. You remember um, the NHIS where they said we're going to do a one-term premium. Mm -hmm. What happened? It never came to fruition. So it was a talk for you to actually what, win political votes. <coughs> and then you come in. And I remember I'm from the Western region, so I'm pa passionate about that, where the, most of Ghana's natural resources emanate from there. Ghana's GDP, the, the biggest chunk comes from there. And I remember he promised that 10% of 
of the oil revenue will go into Western region. When he said that, I said, this man doesn't know what he's talking about because we, um, our um, type of governance is, is a centralized system. It's not federalism, you understand? So whatever you take goes into the center. At the time, we have 10 regions. So if you say 10% of 100%, it's smooth, isn't it? Are you, are you questioning the, the credibility or the integrity of the former president? So I'm actually putting my points across. Which is that he may have... Um, made, there were certain promises uh, that were made in the past. You know, I started... Okay. But the question is, if I did he personally make those promises? Yes. Because that's the question that's yes. been coming up. Yes, you see? <laughs> and then reiterating, I'm going to reiterate. I, right. I said out of consistency, there's goodwill. Mm. You understand? So if he comes out to say, okay, 10% is going to go to the Western region... And I'm saying that we organize our system of government is a centralized one. At the time, there were 10 regions, okay? If it was 16 regions now and you come and say 10%, then you're actually telling me something good. Okay. At that point, I actually thought, no, he's actually saying something. And I'm going on to say that every time the NDC manifesto has changed. Okay. So it, it means that it's like going out to ask some, a lady out and you listen to the weaknesses, and mm. then actually use that as your what um, way of acting. It's not all politicians. I, as I'm speaking now, yes. I'm actually talking about consistency. Yes. Okay. And if you look at me, uh, what I can come here the next time and you ask me um, things, and I'll say the same thing. It's right. only when you're lying okay. that you will not be consistent. Okay. You understand? I get it. And so if you're lying, then you have to actually put notes down and then you refer to them. Okay. And then you use the gobble, uh, is it the, the, gobble, uh, the, the thing you approach. The Gobel's the, theory. The Gobel's theory. Repeats so, the same thing. It will come across as if exactly. it's Exactly. So is that what you think the NDC is doing? Exactly. Yeah. Really? I mean, I mean, it's a lot here, isn't it? All right. It speaks so for itself. Me... <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm not done. Okay. I know so, you're just about to land. No, no. I buy equal time. Yeah. You see, five, so, five minutes each. Okay. So <laughs> I've actually done two minutes now. Right. So you see, now... He comes in to talk about e levy. Mm. Okay, that when he comes in, um, he Ghanaians vote for him. Um, he's going to actually um, cancel that. Right. You remember the Vodafone deal? The same thing was said. Okay. That if we come to power, we're going to actually reverse it. It was never done. Now, under all this, uh, we haven't actually said that everything is rosy in this country. There's turbulence in the economy. And it's not just Ghana. Okay. We do not live in isolation. We have trading partners. And so when we talk about COVID, it is a fact. Okay. When nine months, you're paying salaries. After paying salaries, there's no production. So obviously, the economic, economy is going to go into recess. And then if you're trading with other countries, for example, USA, Europe, and all that, where we do not own vessels, and we are net imported of most of our commodity, then it comes from there. A freight cost has tripled. So the end user is going to end up paying it. That is why this government is saying that industrialization, because we've actually followed the Gudgesberg economy up until now, and it is not helping us. So our balance of trade, uh, trade is weak. We cannot actually um, have stronger foreign currencies and all that. So for us to go into the industrialization, which is a long-term thing, let's go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. And then the short-term thing, what is it? The e-levy. Mm -hmm. The short-term thing, you have another avenue of going to IMF. Mm -hmm. This government said, no, I'm not going to go to IMF because it is an economic revolution. Because the president has said that uh, when COVID was actually broke out, he said, I can always bring the economy back, but we cannot bring lives back. Right. So let us look within us. Okay. A short-term or medium-term plan. Okay. Um, E-levy, the long-term thing is industrialization. Within that, my brother was saying that he went to America and then invest, some investors were coming in and then they say, I have also met investors who think that there's future in Ghana because you're looking at the security reason because foreign direct investment is a market. Because you look at Nigeria as compared to Ghana, they know the security there is not good. So Ghana is a place to be. And they look at the fundamentals here and they think that there's a future in Ghana. So I've dealt with people to, right. who want to invest in Ghana. Okay. So that is It depends on to, who you interact with. Exactly. Okay. You see? And then to conclude, when NDC went to IMF, there were conditionalities. Freeze public sector employment and all that. And this government is saying, no, let us bite the bullet. In spite of all these things, let us make sure we have a short-term, um, short medium-term, and long-term plan, which I have mentioned. So going forward, I think that we need to look within us and then see what we can do. You know, okay. the um, Russia-Ukraine um, war. <clears throat> I disagree with the embassy, the Russian embassy, to say, saying that we shouldn't have said that it is going to affect our economy. 10 million barrels of crude oil comes from where? Um, Russia, right? There's something called cost of production. Most of the countries in Europe, okay, get gas from there. 
Last week, I realized, I heard that they've actually shut some of the gas supplies to some companies, so right. they cannot produce. Okay. If they cannot produce, and then demand is higher, and the supplies, whatever it is in economics, the prices will be higher. And we, as net importers, will bear the brunt of that. Okay. So the a speech by President Mahama, I don't think it's going, it's just the same old things. Okay. So um, Ghanaians would actually decide on that for us. There's a gentleman called Ignatius from Ahanta West. He says he likes, he likes, he likes your matter, pa. Thank you. Uh, says, I, thank you. I don't know whether he's MPP, but he says he's a <laughs> So as for the non-politicians, they can do a minute each. They, they, they don't have a problem at all. Maybe. And that's Gloria. Oh, uh, as for you, I'm from Ghana. So I'm, yeah, no I'm, 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 I'm from Ghana. <laughs> I'll just say that I read mm. that 23-page um, crossroads speech. Okay, right. And it was interesting. Of course, mm. don't forget that it's a campaign speech. Right. Because we have two years in seven months right. to the next elections. We don't have time. Okay. So everybody is campaigning. It is a campaign speech. And, um, well, it is a campaign speech, but I just... But <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, uh, it but, is a but, campaign speech. It's just that, right. you know, uh, President Mahama has been on the seat before. So right. when I read issues about NHIS, NHIS and all that, I was like... But didn't we have problems during his period with NHIS? And I'm just wondering, why does he want to come back again for only four years when our constitution gives NDC the power to have someone for eight years, you know, uh, breaking uh, every, the eight. Every, every but that's none of no, my business, not deck, I not guess. Every but it's still, it's that's still my deck, business because I'm deck. a Ghanaian. <laughs> but with the E-Levy, okay, with the E-Levy, <laughs> okay, I would right, advise all that... Right. All stakeholders, once again, get involved with the Ministry of Finance to find other alternatives. Mm -hmm. We have rent tax, which can be collected by the okay. GRE, and I think there are some apps for that. And then we have the property tax. There are so many yes, others, yes. because mm -hmm. I remember when we had that um, capacity tax for cars. Mm -hmm. I had this old Kia Sorento, and I was paying 1600 for DVLE. Okay. I screamed and screamed and screamed, but we had to pay. Mm. But finally, government listened. The listening government listened to the um, stakeholders, the, the and that, that was scrapped. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, with the e levy, I thought if I transfer just 100 Ghana, yes. I will not be taxed. But mm. I made the mistake of transferring more than that first, and I was heavily taxed. Then I tried a, a hundred Ghana, and I was still taxed. Apparently, okay. it's just for the first hundred Ghana okay. that you are not. But if you transfer beyond that, it's quite. And for those of us in the private sector, it's quite hard because don't you realize that the the statistics, the statistics are that only ten percent are in the formal sector. Right. Ninety percent of employment is in the private sector. So maybe we should look have at another it again, look. Eh? That's what I recommend, and that should involve all stakeholders. Right. MPP, NDC, CPP, yeah. traditional leaders, traditional non political authority. actors. And like then, <laughs> and then um, I guess the campaign continues with this um, whatever speech right. that was given. Right. Now I'll just call it a campaign, campaign. speech. Okay. All right. Dr. Do you also see it as a campaign speech? Or you think there are issues there which are worth. Oh, Thank for me, there are issues there that are worth okay. looking at. For right. instance, I agree with the former president when he talked about. Reshuffle. I mean, uh, if you look at, we, at, a, at a point, we had serious challenges with security in this country, and some of us advocated that the former IGP should go for a new person to come in. Come. As we said today, we can breathe, breathe what do you guys sigh of relief, yes, you know, uh, because we have a new sheriff on the block, and you can see the amount of work he has done. And so it tells us that. Uh, there is no, you can't tell me that all the ministers under the current mm -hmm. dispensation are doing well. Okay. It's technically flawed. So I would want to see the president. Because somehow I would so you also agree there should be a reshuffle? Oh, yes. I think this should have happened about a year ago. And I'm telling you that if this should take place, the economy would show up. We are going to have a lot of activities taking place. But at the moment, we seem to do you, be. Do you, on, have a, do you have in mind any ministry that should undergo a reshuffle? No, I don't want it to look like I'm mm. attacking, but okay. I mean, if you look at uh, the issues we have had at, uh, what's the name? Uh, health. Health. The okay. health ministry, the mm. inconsistency, mm. the apologies. Mm. The, mm. You know, that came He in. shouldn't be there by now. Well, I mean, he should have gone. He should have gone, should have gone in, 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 many, in, 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 many, in, in, many. Do you, do you, do you agree the finance ahead. minister should also go? Well, the, with the finance minister, uh, well, there are challenges here, and I'm going to go into. I am also the vice chairman 
of the Ghana Chamber of Construction Industry. Right. And so uh, contractors have not been paid. Okay. And so most of them are laying off, mm. even though I know there are processes in place to pay, to pay them. To pay. The process is delaying. Okay. And so I would not want my finance minister sacked because if the finance minister is sacked today... The contractors will uh, not be paid now. They, they, they will not be paid now. So uh, permit me if I say that right. I will not be able you to say that. He should stay for now and then deal with the issues of payment. You get it? I yeah, so, right. But for E-Levy, okay. I... I'm one of the quiet supporters of e -Levy, e even though my wife disagrees with me seriously. Oh, interesting. But unfortunately, it looks like uh, she's proven me wrong okay. because then the discrepancies with regards to the way it was rolled out, I think that, you know, uh, it could have been done better, okay. you know, in a manner that probably uh, will not bring oh, about, such, such you know, some of the okay. issues. I mean, I use, uh, what's the name? Mobile money. Mobile money. And I think that a lot of people are rushing. We should be very careful. Let me use this medium to educate people. It's E-Levy is a law now. Mm. And so if you go and you go and take your 50000 and you put it in your pocket and you are robbed, you should be careful not to blame government because then uh, you did that. And so I would say that we have NDC, NDC, your mama says if NDC comes, they'll repeal it. But for now, it's a law. And so let's all go by it. Those who can do their transaction should do it. But they, people should not go into banking halls and begin to carry money around or else. Okay. As a security sector player, mm. we are go, the police is likely to be overwhelmed. Okay. And we don't, if you are robbed, okay. I mean, uh, you cannot blame the police because then the police cannot be everywhere. I get and that. so for me, I think that uh, GRA, the Ministry of Finance, should look at how they can align this platform well so that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if it works better, it will be good for all there's of us, a, but, but the government should pay, uh, 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 should pay the contractor. Mr. Charles Bisfield, there's a man called, there's a man who just sent a message, it's called Adon Boche. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, kindly ask Charles Bisfield if tomatoes, onions, maize, cassava, etc. are imported from Ukraine. He's a oh, former yeah. DC for <laughs> Isikuma Odo <laughs> Membrakwa. <laughs> so those ones who are going up, but that has nothing to do with it. He raised me silent. No, he chooses no, to be silent no, on this one. I, I think he's, he's, he's bored. All right, so let me, let me, let me do joking, this. Uh, Shamima Muslim. <laughs> Hello, Shamima. <laughs> Hello, Shamima. Can you hear me? Oh, I think. Mm. Well, have we lost Shamima on the line? Okay. You can give All right. Time to the let me let me yes let me do this. Um, so some some just a quick just quick ones uh, two minutes and then we can we can wrap up. So here we go uh, with the messages that you have sent us. Yes. So this one's a good morning to your panelists and to your viewers. For me, they should review their uh, ranking processes because the number is still very good. Why am I saying that? Journalists in Ghana are not safe. Therefore, they can't do the work they were assigned to do due to political power. Political faces, um, political controls, and more. Thank you, Kinsley uh, Sukura Bataku from Navrongo. Yes, Shamima, you're on. Hello, Shamima. Hello, Mora. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. Good. So um, I don't know how you intend to do this. So, to wrap up on the, Let I'm sorry, your take on the JDM. On, uh, okay. Yes, but before that, quickly, Charles. Okay. On the media matter, when I say I blame the government, it is because you and I would have to agree that a government is like the head of family. And it's, it's the responsibility of the government to ensure that all members of the family are thriving and are on the path to, you know, consistent progress. Because if you don't take responsibility on what is happening in every sector of the economy, a ranking will come and it will place the country which you lead in a bad light. And that reflects on the leadership of the government of the day, whether it's NDC, whether it's NPP. The fact of the matter is that here we are now and the ratings are bad. So government must be interested. And the, the, the information minister concedes that there's got to be a setting, coordinating role that government plays in ensuring that the policies that even the information minister has, you know, initiated, you know, the commitment to ensuring um, safety of journalists is, is seen through so that it's just not any white paper lying around. 
So we must come to the table and NMC, GJA, Journalism Associations have a duty. Nobody Sh is Shabiba, can you, that, can you can you please um, no can you please hang in there for just can you please hang in there for just 10 seconds? We need to take a short break. Uh, we need to do this quickly. Is and then it? please hang in there. Well, I'll come back to you. Okay. So we're taking a break. We'll be, we'll be right back. Now, Shaima, if you're on, please. Um, um, yes, I am. Yes, well, yes. I'm please, sorry. please, let's do this so, quickly. I mean, yes. Finally, I'm, I'm really more interested in the media bit, and I'll just mention okay. briefly about the speech. So okay. the point is that we have to, uh, Charles. I mean, Kojopon, Honorable Kojopon Nkrumah agrees that there's got to be greater collaboration with NMC so that we can um, deepen the initiative um, on the coordinated mechanism on the safety of journalists. However, there's a point that he makes that to address RFS concern about poor economic conditions of most journalists in the country, it is not the RFS concerns. The concerns about poor economic conditions have been concerns about journalists in this country for the longest period of time. And we must also see the linkage between the poor salaries in the media to the state of the economy. Because when the economy thrives and business thrives, media organizations are able to make a lot of revenue in advertisement. When the economy lacks, PR budgets are cut and media struggles. We must also look, I want to make a controversial suggestion that perhaps it is also time as we did the banking sector reforms to go deeply and do media sector reforms so that licenses are not giving out willy-nilly to any individual who cannot sustain, especially in the regions. Okay. Especially, it's like a one-man business in the regions and people are not, in fact, slave incomes. Okay. And journalists are just being abused because they are not being paid their fair wages. And All we right. must look at that. I mean, okay. with regards to the country, obviously Ghana is at the cross crossroads. We've okay. been at the crossroads for the longest uh, period in time. I, I really, I really would have no government. I really would have wished you could we could have the time for you to comment on right. this matter. I would like to sincerely apologize for this because we have a quick um, executive interview to do. Shamima, thank you so very much for your time. All right. Mm, thank you too for having me. Right. So Shaima Muslim is a convener for Alliance for Women in, in Media Africa, uh, giving us her thoughts on the global index for, uh, that's, uh, free, that, that's Press Freedom Index. <laughs>